Today we have with us Michelle Campbell and she is from Fishburn United Methodist Church in Hershey and she's going to tell us about her deaf and hearing impaired ministry. Thank you for coming. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So can you tell us, how do you include sign language at your church? Um, we offer sign language interpretation every Sunday at one of our services. And then if someone would email or call in, we would offer it at any of the other services as well. And it's also broadcast online for people to watch from home to okay. have interpretation. Very neat. Um, how did you come up with that idea to broadcast it online so that even people um, who might not be as close to your church to get there and see it could come? And see um, well, our church has a really big online ministry and broadcasts out to other locations. So they just kind of put me as a box inside their little oh, okay. you know, window on their computer like you would see in the news if there was a tornado or something. Okay. And it's just shown you know, just naturally as part of the ministry, they have a camera on me and they just put it in there, boom. <laughs> Very neat. Um, I've seen sign language used during songs, during worship and so forth. Um, how do you feel like it's different to do signing during a song during worship versus actually giving the message? Signing during a song is more poetic, as um, just like singing is, it, more, it flows more and there's a lot more expression. Um, and then when you're interpreting for a person, like a specific person, you become them. So if I'm interpreting for an older gentleman, I become him instead of a younger <laughs> female. So okay. you take on their expression, whereas when you're interpreting a song, it's more your own expression and okay. how you're feeling the Lord move during that song or how you know the words of the song make you feel um, often can be sad if the song sounds happy but the meaning is sad you you know it, it's more expressive than if you're interpreting a spoken sermon or a scripture or something like that okay um, what are some other ways that you use your signing ministry at the church um, we offer sign language classes to children and adults and this started because we had a deaf student in our daycare so we wanted to teach the teachers some sign language so that everyone in the whole building could communicate with these children, not just their teacher or their aide, but everybody in the whole building. Okay. So the directors learn sign language, the people in the kitchen learn sign mm -hmm. language, everybody learns sign language. Um, and then so the students can communicate as well. And we saw a need in the community that there's other people, other school districts, other daycares that want to learn sign language. So we open it up to everyone. and. Um, we've been offering it now for a few years and we see different people come back and it's really been a connection to people outside in the community and to the daycare to connect with the church and with sign language. Um, and they also, at the end of their like, class or session as we call it, semester, sign a song in church. So okay. then the people in church can see the ministry up front and not just me and see that there are other people signing and it's not just one person you know, interpreting for everybody else. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, you talked about the little kid that was in the preschool that um, instead of just communicating with one person that you taught everybody, I never really thought about how isolating that could probably be. Yeah, and social skills are so important when you're a little kid and we don't want them to be misunderstood or not have the kids understand like, well, why aren't they answering me back? Or, mm -hmm. you know, why are they stealing my toy? You know, maybe mm -hmm. they asked, please, can I have a turn? And the kid didn't understand. So mm -hmm. really opening the eyes kids are so impressionable at a young age, so just teaching them at a young age, you know, this is sign language and this is why, and this is where they, why they have hearing aids, and this is why they have cochlear implants, and mm -hmm. just teaching them so that they grow up accepting of other kids when they meet them as an adult or, you know, in the workplace. Do you think that um, signing is going to be something that grows in our communities? I think sign language is used more in education now than it ever has been before. There's a lot of research that sign language is good for children that hear in developing languages. So it, a lot of daycares are using it. A lot of children with special needs, not only hearing loss, are communicating in sign language because of just the, la the way the language presents itself. So I think it really is becoming more commonly used and accepted and noticed. You okay. know, when you're at Hershey Park and someone's signing, everybody notices. And if mm -hmm. they can say, please, or ask you a question or ask for help, they yeah. will. Yeah, 
Yeah, very neat. Well, um, I'm excited for your ministry that you're Thank teaching you. not only the people that are hearing impaired, but also the people in the community yeah. and um, getting them into the church in that way and that they can connect with other people. So very neat. Thank you. If you would like to learn more about this ministry, you can check out my Facebook page at Susquehanna Express.